Hi everyone, welcome to my coverage of the Zurich Chess Challenge, uh, in which Carlsen won the tournament. I actually am going to cover only the five slow games that he played. While I do think rabbit chess is still very valuable, when guys are this strong, honestly they continue to play at a very high level, probably 2700 and above. Despite that, I'm going to just look at the first five games that Carlsen played. And what I'm mainly going to do is just look at like one turning point in each game. Although there's one game in particular that I really like where I will probably go over the whole game. But in all of these, I'm going to ask you to try to find a move so you can test yourself against the top players and see how you did. So in this position, white to move. Now, the material is even. However, obviously white has a rook on the seventh rank and it has some vague threats against the black king. So my question here to you, what would you do for white? Pause your video, try to come up with a move. And Carlson played uh, a quite a good one. All right, so unpause it if you're ready now. So basically in chess, the, the best way to kind of find good moves when you're like attacking your opponent are just think of what you want to achieve. Like, if there's a move that would be really strong, but there's one thing stopping it, stop, uh, basically, what's the word, stop at all costs? That's not even the word, but like, do anything possible to get rid of the problem that's stopping you from playing the move you want to play. So, imagine we could play the move bishop to d5. This would be a tremendously powerful move. If the king moves, bishop g7 is mate. So if the, the king can't go to f8, so there's no other choice but to block with the rook, and that is obviously winning for white. So as soon as you see that idea, you realize, oh wait, there's a problem. The knight can take the bishop. But this type of logical thinking should lead you to the move that Carlson found, knight to c2. Because it's so important to get that knight out of the way that you can just give away a piece for it. And the idea is that after knight takes knight, Bishop check, the only thing that black can do is to block the check. And now the best move, which you kind of have to see still, rook to c1. The point being that when the knight moves away, we simply capture, capture again, and rook c8 will lead to checkmate. So a very logical and strong move by Carlson. Most likely, Gelfand missed it somewhere along the way, and... He ended up, he couldn't even take the knight, so he ended up getting a miserable position playing g5, just doing anything to get the bishop off this, this diagonal. And after white took, black, white took another pawn. Uh, and, and notice, by the way, uh, there's still a very cool tactic here. If black takes the knight, we have the strong move bishop to d5, king to h8. And now try to find a strong move for white. And if you found the move, rook takes e5, you are very smart. Because after rook takes e5, rook a8, king g7, rook g8, it is checkmate. So a very nice tactical sequence from Magnus Carlsen. And this was really the turning point of the game. Once he found this move, he just ended up being up two pawns. Cleaned up uh, Gelfand pretty easily from that point forward. So thanks everyone for watching this game, and tomorrow we will take a look at Carlson's game with Aronian. And don't forget, Aronian has just come off a big victory at Tata Steel, so that'll be an interesting one.